Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, The Complete Adventure, published by Random House. Chapter 1 In a big high-tech city somewhere in the future, television reporter April O'Neill was doing a remote broadcast outside a mysterious back alley warehouse. Crime. It's just something we take for granted in the big city. But recently, three scientific equipment companies have been robbed and some high-tech machinery stolen. The strange part is that the method of the robberies is anything but high-tech. Experts say it can only be the work of ninjas, an ancient band of Japanese warriors. We're here at Technology Central, for it may be the next target of these mysterious burglars. I'll report as soon as anything develops. April O'Neil, Happy Hour News. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, that's a wrap. This isn't the safest neighborhood in the world. Let's go. What are you, a bunch of sissies? This is gonna be fun. We're the news media for crying out loud. Who'd want to hurt us? Uh, them maybe? The cameraman nervously pointed over April's shoulder. She turned around in surprise. Huh? A group of punks were stalking out of the shadows. Their leader angrily waved a metal rod. April sprang into action. Get the camera! But the television crewmen were terrified. They flung down their equipment and ran off. Uh, I think I left the iron on in my apartment. Me too! The leader of the punks scowled at April. We got a message for you, lady. Oh? The big boss wants you to stick to reporting fashion shows. Okay, uh, sure. No problem. We don't believe you! Then here. Catch! In one smooth motion, April picked up the television camera and hurled it straight at the thug. <coughs> April turned and started to run. Knowing she couldn't outrun the punks, she squeezed through the narrow opening of a large sewer grate at a street curb. Ouch! This is a tight squeeze. You must be putting on weight, O'Neill. The punks weren't going to let April escape so easily. They pried open a manhole cover and followed April down into the sewers. Oh. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I really must be onto something hot if they're trying to kill me. Get her! Get her! They're gaining on me. April looked back over her shoulder and crashed headlong into a brick wall. Oh. Oh. As April dizzily lifted her head, she saw the punks looming over her. Sign off time, April O'Neil. But as the leader lifted his metal rod, something struck him on the chin. Chill out, homeboy! It was an enormous green turtle. A second punk tried to attack the turtle, but he wasn't fast enough. Watch it with that thing, pal. A third punk whipped out a pistol. You are dead meat! Another turtle's sword sliced right through the pistol's barrel. You shouldn't play with guns. Another turtle knocked another punk's sword out of his hands. Weird looking dudes. Two punks tried to attack one of the turtles. But he easily flung the punks against the brick wall. Soon all four punks were out cold, with their weapons jumbled in a heap. Oh. April was shaking with relief. She looked gratefully at the four strange turtles. I don't know who you are, but thanks. <gasps> You're not human! We're dealing with a real mind here. The four turtles advanced towards April. You... your... turtles! I can't handle this. Hey, whoa! Whoa! Ah, uh, she's no fun. She fainted. <laughs> Elsewhere, someone was watching April and her rescuers on a large screen. What the devil? A short time later, deeper in the sewers, April slowly woke up from her fainting spell. She was in a large room filled with furniture, books, even a TV. Oh, my head. Where am I? Now I remember those turtles. 
some hot tea. What? A, a giant rat? Sure enough, a giant rat was holding out a mug of hot tea. Calm yourself. You are safe. Uh, but who? What? One of the turtles stepped into the room. Pizza time! I've got some pepperoni and ice cream, jelly bean and mushroom, and my favorite, anchovies and peanut butter. This is seriously grossing me out. I start off to do a story about some high-tech mm. robberies, mm. and I end up talking to a bunch of turtles mm. and their pet rat. <laughs> Who are you guys? Well, perhaps I can best explain. Mm -hmm. The rat then told April the following story. The story of my young friends and I is really the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi. In Japan, there is a ninja clan known as the Foot. Yoshi was a quiet man. He was their teacher in the warrior ways of enlightenment. But one student sought to usurp his leadership. His name was Oroku Sake. One day, when a master teacher visited the Foot School, he made his move. In a flash, Oroku Saki whipped out his knife and pinned Yoshi's robe to the wall. All the students bowed down to their master teacher, except for Yoshi. Bow down before our beloved master. What? I can't move. My rope is pinned. He reached behind his back and found out the reason. A knife? The other teachers saw the weapon and turned on poor Yoshi. Treacherous dog! You brought to kill our honorable master! I? No! For this misdeed, you should be banished from the Foot Clan forever! What say you, honorable master? I say, throw the bum out. Saki had won his battle to control the clan. In Japan, under Saki's leadership, the Foot became an army of crime. In disgrace, Yoshi fled to America and was forced to live in the sewers. His only friends were the rats, until one day some new friends came. Oof. Down the drain, a boy walking on the street above the sewer tripped. The glass bowl he was carrying broke. Four little turtles came down the grate and landed on Yoshi. He made them his pets. Then one day, Yoshi found the turtles covered in a strange, glowing liquid. <gasps> Yoshi picked up the turtles and looked at the liquid. It was a powerful mutagen. It caused whoever touched it to take on the form of whatever animal they had most recently been in contact with. The turtles began to become human. They had most recently been with Yoshi. But Yoshi had most recently been with the rats. April pointed to the giant rat telling the story. Then, Hamato Yoshi is you. The turtles grinned. You've got a mind like a steel trap, lady. Splinter nodded at the turtles. Knowing that they would be outcasts, I trained them in the art of ninjutsu. They named me Splinter, and I in turn named them after my favorite Renaissance painters. <laughs> As Splinter introduced them, each turtle came forward with a weapon. Hey! This is Donatello. His simple wooden staff can disarm any adversary. Hey! Here is Raphael. No sword on earth can withstand his sai. Hey! As for Leonardo, his swordsmanship is unmatched. Meet Michelangelo, master of the whirling nunchakus. Michelangelo picked up a pizza and spun it around on his finger. And master of the whirling pizzas. That is how they became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So do you know who dropped the mutagen? No, but one day we'll find them and force them to return our master to his human form. What do you think, April? 
I think you did those robberies. What? what? Ain't you up on current events, lady? We just saved your life. Whoever did those robberies might have been ninjas, but they weren't turtles. Either way, you're still news. You put us on TV and every scientist in town will be after us. You're staying here till we figure something out. We spent half our lives in a glass bowl and we ain't going back. Later, as the turtles try to decide what to do with April. I got it. She stays here with us for the rest of her life. Yeah, right. Try again, Mr. Wizard. Leonardo strapped his swords on his back. There's only one solution. We'll find those ninjas and April will get her story, leaving us out of it. Let's go. Meanwhile, at their boss's headquarters, the punks were telling their story to the boss. Uh, those four weirdos beat the pants off of us, Mr. Shredder. I know that, you idiots. Did they look like reptiles? Uh, I didn't get such a good look, you know. The Shredder shook his fist. Fools! They could have been turtles. I must know. Back beneath the city streets, the turtles in April busily search through the sewers. We're not going to find anything here. This is where we fought those dudes. Maybe if... Look! Michelangelo picked up a matchbox from the ground. It had Ninja Pizza written on it. Wow, what luck! Do you know what this is? A crucial piece of evidence? The clue that will lead us to the heart of the evil ninja empire? Even better, it's a place where we can get some pizza. I'll check it out. No, April. You wouldn't last five minutes in a ninja pizza parlor. Besides, we're hungry. The turtles began climbing up a ladder to the street. April followed them. Moments later, at street level, April peered around the corner of a building. The turtles clustered behind her. We'll get nowhere unless we do something about your looks. Bingo! Stay here. There's a men's clothing store right down the street. April returned a short time later and handed each turtle a trench coat and a snap brim hat. This is the best I could do. Here's looking at you, kid. Just try not to draw attention to yourself, Raphael. I'm Leonardo. Oh, sorry. April and the turtles headed for the Ninja Pizza Parlor. It should be down the next block, okay, Donatello? I'm Michelangelo. The next block was lined with stores, a ninja pizza parlor, a ninja shoe repair, and a ninja cleaners. Hey, look, there it is. Hey, there's something suspicious about this neighborhood. They went into a pizza parlor. Two men were behind the counter. April didn't like their looks. I don't know about this place. <laughs> don't worry, April. Who ever heard of ninjas hanging out in a pizza parlor? One of the countermen suddenly stabbed a sword into the counter. Welcome to Ninja Pizza, home of the nice slice. The turtle sat down at a table. April was still nervous. She looked at her new friends. But you're ninjas, and you're in a pizza parlor. A camera hanging in the corner of the room recorded everything as the shredder watched on his giant screen in the Technodrome. This April O'Neill is getting too close to my operation. Mm. The turtles happily ate their pizza. Mm. Then they noticed April wasn't there. Hey, what happened to April? Mm. I guess she wasn't hungry. Outside the pizza parlor, April did some snooping. She noticed the name on one of the buildings. Manhattan Security Service. Hmm. She pushed open the door and slipped into the building's lobby. A receptionist was speaking on a phone. Oh, why, of course we can help. We offer protection to many scientific firms throughout the city. Huh? Then the receptionist gave an order over a public address system. Security Team C, report to reception. A 
a group of marching robots arrived at the reception area. The receptionist gave them instructions. I've got another scientific equipment company just waiting to be cleaned out. April realized what was happening. These robot foot soldiers were responsible for the robberies around town. She ran for the door. Oh no, I've got to get to a phone. Oh, hello, boss. I found the robbers. Send a crew to... Mm. A gloved hand was swiftly clamped over April's mouth. Then two masked men picked the reporter up and carried her off. Mm. April? April? Moments later, the turtles appeared on the scene. I'm worried about April. Look, it's her wallet, and here's her press pass. It's a trail. Let's go. As they approached a six-story building, Michelangelo looked up at the roof. Something was hanging over the edge. Look, her purse. Whoa, way to go, Hawkeye. The turtles ran up six flights of stairs to the top of the building and pushed open the door to the roof. Who should they spot but April, bound and gagged? April! Careful, Leo. It could be a trap. Suddenly, a group of masked men surrounded April. Yup, it's a trap! Raphael looked at his friends. Loose the coats, guys. It's go time! Donatello plunged his staff into one of the masked men, but the staff didn't even make a dent. Raphael struck another man with his scythe. Clang? Did you say clang? Leonardo's sword sliced through the robot's body. Metal innards spilled out. They're robots! Robots? Yahoo! Let's rock, dudes! Michelangelo cracked his nunchaku against one robot. Another robot put out a force field to pull Raphael toward him. Raphael grabbed onto a vent pipe. Some kind of tractor beam. Man, where are they getting their gear? Mars? Ugh, can't hold on much longer. Eat steel, creep! Raphael let go of the steel side. The strange beam pulled the glittering trident right into the robot, which exploded. The force field collapsed. As more robots approached, the four turtles ran behind a wall and pushed against it with all their might. Let's take out some of these metal monkeys. Push! <laughs> the wall crashed down, crushing the robots, as April looked on in amazement. Hope we didn't keep you waiting long, April. The turtles untied April and then ran to the edge of the roof. Some of the robots had escaped and were running across another rooftop. Oh no, they're getting away! Oh no, they're not! Leonardo tied a rope around his sword and hurled it down to the nearby roof of the Manhattan Security Service Building. Let's go, gang! One by one, April and the turtles slid down the taut rope. Once inside the building, they looked around in amazement. Where is everybody? Guys, look! This is an Acme Technologies digital transceiver. This is big league gear. Donatello stared into the transceiver's screens and saw the Shredder, who was in his surveillance room observing the turtles. Hey, who's the guy with the metal face? On the screen, the Shredder shook his fists. They are turtles. They must not discover my technodrome. An announcement came over the PA system. All footbots return to the technodrome at once. Technodrome? Where's that? You mean, what's that? We came from the roof, so it must be down. Here's the stairs. Let's boogie! Minutes later, many floors below... <sighs> you stay here, April. We'll stop these foot creeps. In here, guys! Michelangelo ran into the basement room. Two footbots were turning large water valves. And what are they doing with those... Valves! Suddenly, a huge rush of water poured out of the pipes. April gasped as it came toward her. <gasps> Hold on, April! The turtles lifted her up. Thanks! The water's rising fast! We've got to get to the roof! Where 
Where are the Beach Boys when you need them? <laughs> Cowabunga! Floor by floor, the building filled up with water. Oh, come on, guys. Make for the stairs. <laughs> the Turtles and April ran back up to the roof. <laughs> The rope! It's our only chance! We gotta climb back the way we came. They grabbed onto the rope and hoisted themselves up hand over hand, just as a geyser of water exploded through the roof. Clinging safely to their rope, the turtles and April looked down at the chaos below. Whoa! Ha! I'd say that the ninja crime wave is a washout! <laughs> Later, back in their underground home, the turtles spread out the footbot's clothing they had brought back. Splinter looked at it. This is what the ninja robots wore. Oh, as I feared. It is the uniform of the Foot Clan. My old enemy, Oraku Sake, must be nearby. <laughs> Don't worry, Master Splinter. If that metal-faced goon shows up, we'll get him. We turtles don't know the meaning of defeat. Yeah. He never bothered to look it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you guys take anything seriously? The turtles grinned and held up slices of hot pizza. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs>